efficient game. Yeah. You know, talk about his play. That's what we just talked about. How efficient it was. He didn't have to force anything. Um, he had. He's making more plays like he never would have busted out in the break. Uh, he made a two-on-one play that he blew up in practice yesterday. He watched the video with us today, and then he made it perfect today. So there's the application that we, we stress with all our guys. How are you going to apply what we're learning every day, and how soon can you do it? So that was that was good. And six rebounds. That's something he wasn't doing last year. We're encouraging him. You know. Unless the, the guard is underneath or, or, or the shot comes from the corner by a guard, you're on the backboard. Left. Coach, was the decision to play Mo, Mo Wagner uh, made during the game? And what went yeah, it was. I was just going to go with it. We had talked, we've had a lot of talk about this. And he is, you know, with the way things are today in the fifth year, you know, it's not like it used to be. In the fifth year, sometimes he might not be playing with you or, or he might be somewhere else. So let's just, I really wanted to see him in a game, and I love what we saw. He was active, he's got a motor, um, he's got some things he's got to work on. He, he doesn't have the strength to be, to do the way he'd like to in the Big Ten yet, but um, that's what we're going to work on in, in, in the in-between sessions the best we can without inhibiting his ability to play the next game. For having to play all those games last year without Karras, when, when you see him out there, I guess just in terms of what all the different things he can do, uh, Dawkins said, you know, irreplaceable was the word he said. To actually see him back out there, just what is, how would you kind of quantify the difference of having him on the floor? Well, you don't, you just don't have to have this play card that is like trying to dial things up all the time. He's just going to make plays in space when either it's in transition, which he was really good in today. Or he'll opt out of an offensive set because he needs to, because they played it a certain way. So he, he sees the floor well. His passing ability is way underrated, and you know we like to have the ball in his hands. So that, that's just I would say I'm, I'm less relaxed, but it's not like you're you're racking your brain trying to find ways to score. He he helps you a lot in that area. Your length affecting so much on defense. A lot of that being. Him and that wingspan, yeah. things like that, on the other side of the floor, just what's yeah. the difference? I mean, with, with the, the whole length that we have out there, I mean, that's that's huge for us to be able to, you know, just as you wall up people as they go down the line, you need to be like this. And those hands, if they're out, they make a big difference. And seeing over a ball screen, the guy comes off a ball screen, you stick your hands up, it blows up a lot, especially if he's six feet and you're six, seven. So it's, it's, it's something we got to play to it, and probably do it even when we play more zone in the future. Swing over here to Noah, Coach. Um, how'd you think Spike did? I know you were trying to keep yeah, minutes. Yeah, it was good. Sure. I wanted to push him. You can't push him for ten minutes in there, but I, you could see he was he was laboring right after after the second half after five. That's why I wanted to get him out for two or three and throw him right back in there. That made another step for him. He needs to shoot the ball when he's open. So when you talk to him, tell him to shoot when he's open. Okay. But he's got to shoot instead of trying to do some other things. He's, a, he's an incredible shooter, and he needs to do that. But other than that, it was good to have him out here. Chris? Cam quietly had some pretty good numbers in the first half. Talk about some of his cuts and yeah. a lot of things coming in. Yeah, he, you know, he's, he's trying to still understand how he can really effect, effectively help this team. And it, it's ways probably that he wouldn't, wouldn't be in his, in his high school days. So it is, it is there he's looking for people. Pass, like he, he, he threw a pass to Mark underneath today that was a big big play for us. He just is, he's, he's got this sense for the game. Now he's just got to channel it all in the right direction. And he won't, I don't think he's going to have to guard a six foot um, four man again that is, that is really quick. So that was, a, that was the issue why DJ played a lot too, is that on the perimeter, Cam guarding the guard is not, a, is not a great matchup sometimes. Swing over to Sean. John, obviously you're not completely healthy yet, but you, you've clearly got a lot of pieces. Can you talk about the process of fitting all this together and then how much fun that might be for you? Yeah, it, it is much more difficult than I thought, Sean, that as we're waiting for the team to get 100% healthy, it's more difficult because, and with more pieces. Last year, it actually was pretty simple after we had the injuries. All right, we only got seven or eight guys. This is what we're going to do. And now you're trying to figure out What's the best way moving forward? Who, what, what personalities, what uh, talent level, what position play is evolving? And it's evolving every day. But then all of a sudden, Zach Irvin can come into the mix any day now, is our hope. And all of a sudden, now 
that dynamic changes. So it's going to make us better. It's my job to make sure it makes, it makes us better. But I wouldn't call it fun yet. You know, it, it is good when we can get the best teams still are going to have eight or nine people in a good rotation.